Hi, what's up everybody? My name is Hugh and this is another video for Hugh Boy Photography. The reason I'm doing this video is because I'm actually laying out some things, getting ready for my uh, brother's wedding. I'm actually photographing my brother's wedding with my partner in a couple of weeks time. I'm setting up all the stuff and I thought I'd just give you a tour. What's going on? What I've got? My desk set up? All the little bits and gadgets and gear that I've got. God, this camera is so heavy. And I'll go over some of the gear as well. This is the room that we edit in and do all the creative stuff. So we've got the MacBook and it's perfect height for when I sit down, it's eye level. So I'm editing here. I can see myself there. It's perfect eye level there. So I'm not straining my neck. I've got a beautiful desk here. I've got my little ergonomic mouse from Logitech. Ergonomic, really nice to use. Loads of buttons on it. So I'm editing. I can get loads of stuff done. I've got a little wrist rest here, which is perfect because this is like a nice little fabric desk mat. It's lovely. So I'm editing. It just feels great and I don't get any wrist strain. Now here also is, I love the brand Logitech. This is a Logitech keyboard. I got this for Christmas a few years ago. Oh, a couple of years ago. Um, this is great. It's backlit. You can attach one device, two to like three different devices. It's really nice. Feels really good to type on as well. Under here I've got a bunch of different kind of stuff. For my MacBook has two USB-C ports on this side, another USB-C port which I'm using on this side which is the Bluetooth receiver for my mouse. And seeing as I've got USB-A connectors for my hard drives here, I need a dongle or a USB-C hub. Best brand for that is gonna be Anchor. This is where my hard drives live. Five terabyte and five terabyte hard drive there and I just plug them in if and when I need them. And when I'm editing, I mainly use the one terabyte storage I've got on the MacBook. Um, and then when I'm done editing or need to get access to videos and stuff, I just plonk them, excuse me, plonk them from here to here and that's where they live. All the files as well, see if I can get down here. There we go, that is a Seagate, another Seagate hard drive, that is eight terabytes. When I'm done editing on the two other five terabytes, or just older files that I've got from years ago or older weddings from years ago as well that's where they live but yeah this is that's my basically the desk this is where I also keep my other stuff I've got I'm borrowing a F Canon 5D Mark III for a wet for my brother's wedding in a couple of weeks thank you very much to the person who lent this to me I'm taking care of it don't don't you worry I've got things like lens filters Wow, don't want to drop that. Good job it's in a case. Uh, lens filters are, are really good. Um, I've got a polarizing filter, which um, means that I'm going to get nice blue skies and any bright highlights are going to be dimmed down a tad. I've got a UV filter for any UV rays coming onto the lens. It's going to get rid of any extra light that I don't, wanna need, don't need. And I've also got an ND4 filter. For example, I am hiring a 85mm f1.4 lens uh, for my brother's wedding and we're going to the beach in St Andrews and if for example it is really bright and I've got my camera at ISO 100 and f-stop at 1.4 and shutter speed on four thousandth which is the fastest on this camera four thousandths of a second and I'm like damn it's still overexposed and I need to make use of that really beautiful f1.4 or f6 or f1.8 I'll need like something to make it darker and the only way to do that is using an ND filter so if that scenario comes up I can smash that ND4 uh, filter I'm just going to dim it down I'm going to make use of the F14, F16, F16 8 capabilities of that beautiful 85mm lens batteries borrowing this battery as well as the main battery for this camera here and also my others which have been quite uh, nicely labelled here so I can tell which one I've got and which one's ready to go next and then I've also got cheap extra batteries for my Canon RP which my partner will have and be shooting with on the wedding day. I've also got my battery chargers there which I keep on the table in case I need to charge. So this camera here, the Canon EOS 5D Mark III takes a CF card and also an SD card. So when I borrowed the camera, I didn't realize that you needed a CF card as well as, a fi as well as an SD card in at the same time, both in to shoot. I just thought you could use one or the other. Bought a CF card for it. 
and I'm going to, which is this CF card here, and I'm going to use that as well as the SD card on the wedding day. It's 32 gig, it's not the most storage, but I've got two of these now that I'm going to shoot on to when I give the 5D back to the person. I'll just, um, either I'll keep this or I'll return it to Amazon. I don't really know. I've got a card reader for it, which is only a cheap USB-A thing, just a CF card reader, as well as my other CF card reader, in case one of them breaks. CF cards and the readers are not that reliable, so I thought I'd be best get two in case because I definitely need to make sure I've got those photos. I've got things like a little rubber camera bag here, as well as another one for a bigger lens here. I've also got a, an SD card case, so I've got, I can keep there's 12 SD cards here in what, at one time which is quite cool, and it's also waterproof and shockproof, which is cool, so if I drop it, I don't have to worry about anything breaking. What else have we got on this table? Oh yes, we have the Canon RP, which is the other camera my partner will have for most of the wedding day. It's the cheapest um, full frame camera that Canon do. It's the Canon EOS RP, full frame capabilities, um, it's mirrorless, which means it doesn't have a mirror in it, which means it's a lot lighter and thinner than this camera I'm actually holding at the moment. This is just a standard 24 to 105 f4 to 7.1, which is not amazing, but it means that we can get some zoom if we need to. And also, I was worried a couple of years ago when I just bought this setup and thought, oh, hang on, we're going to be in a dark church. We need to. f4 to 7.1 is not amazing for a. Uh, for a lens, because so I thought, you know what, spend an extra couple hundred quid and get a cheap 50mm f1.8. Now that 1.8 is going to differ from like an f4. An f4 is cool and sharp for a good depth of field. However, f1.8 is going to let in loads more light. It means that I don't have to whack my ISO up to like really high, um, which means I can get really nice soft photos. And I'm really glad, here it is, it's the Canon 50mm RF. It's a tiny little thing, but it's it's actually really good. Um, it's f1.8, which means it's going to let in loads of light. You screw this on, and it's just perfect. You can practically put the camera with its lens in a big pocket. It's so small, and I'm really glad that we bought it for the day. And it's a really good investment, especially when you're starting off. Canon 6D Mark II is really good at low light and the ISO. You can push the ISO up to 12,800 and um, you, with noise reduction software, you can still get really good results. The lens I've actually got here is a Canon EF 24-105 to f4 lens, and it goes f4 all the way from 24mm all the way to 105mm, which means that I'm not gonna lose any light. It's not gonna go darker when I zoom in. To 105 as opposed to this one this 24 to 105 which at 24 it's f4 and then 105 it goes up to 7 f point f 7.1 aperture which means it's going to let in less light at a longer focal length also another great thing about this lens that i'm shooting on at the moment is the first generation 24 to 105 by canon so it's the Canon EF 24-105 F4L IS USM, which means 24-105, it's going to go F4 all the way from 24mm to 105 and IS means image stabilisation, which means lens and the glass correcting and stabilising the shake. And IS just means image stabilisation, it's correcting, counteracting the shake that I'm actually shaking the camera at the moment which is really good, which is gonna give you an extra couple of stops. I can shoot at 40th of a second. 40th of a second, handheld, really still, and still get a clear, crystal crystal clear photograph, which is absolutely amazing. And that's one of the reasons why I bought this camera lens. I think it came out in 2005. So think about that, that's 18 years old. That's 18 years ago, and it's still a fantastic lens. You know, it focuses quickly, and it's really bright at f1.4. Obviously not as good as like f1.4 or 1.8, but still a fantastic lens. But yeah, God, I'm getting out of breath holding this camera, it's so heavy. Thank you for watching this video. 
this is just a little insight into my editing setup and what I get up to. Thanks for watching this video and I'll possibly see you in the next one.